What's up guys, today's episode of the Adventure Trailer, we're going to accelerate the build. Okay guys, so welcome back. In this episode, we're gonna be building the frame of our adventure trailer and putting this axle uh, up underneath it. So, let me talk a little bit about what's on the table in front of me uh, so you guys can have a better idea of what I bought. Um, as always, there is a link down in the description that'll take you to a Google spreadsheet that will show you uh, affiliate links for all the parts shown here and what I paid for them kind of out the door. To give you an idea of how much this project is costing and it's updated episode by episode uh, so you can go check all this stuff out down in the doobly-doo today so this is a standard 3500 pound uh, 48 inch frame to frame uh, what's called a low boy axle um, you can get these are ubiquitous you can get them all over the internet uh, this one happens to be made by a uh, rockwell american it's supposedly made in the u.s i don't know um, but just from having it here in the shop, it's clearly a well-made axle. Now, the downside of buying one of these low boy axles is they're designed for a spring under design. So these uh, uh, spring pads come welded on. And so basically all I did was I hit them with a plasma cutter and then ground them smooth. You can take them off with a flap disc. Uh, they only got about an inch of weld on either side. Um, because what we're going to do is if you look at this axle, you can see it's bowed up like this. And the reason they do that is because under load, it helps keep your wheels straight, which impacts your tire wear, the drivability of the trailer, and so on. There's a lot of folks on YouTube that'll, that'll basically just flip the axle upside down to gain more clearance. Uh, that's a dumb fucking thing to do because the axle is no longer operating as designed. You're gonna get crap tire wear. So basically, I just cut these off off camera. What we're gonna do is we're gonna clean up a spot and we're gonna weld them on top of our axle in the right spot uh, with the width based on our frame uh, later on. The other stuff I bought is all standard trailer parts. Uh, there are guys who have built these adventure trailers using XJ or YJ uh, leaf packs. They're gonna be longer, they're gonna be wider, they're gonna be heavier, um, but they will flex more. Honestly, you should have some suspension articulation on the trailer, but on the trailer, I can air down the tires um, and pretty much anywhere it's going to go. These factory 24 inch, inch and a half wide uh, trailer springs are going to be just fine. Um, and they come with bushings and sleeves and everything. Um, in addition to that, I got a U bolt kit, which is basically just a U bolt and a top spring pad. This will help secure the axle to the springs. Uh, to the leaf packs, um, all standard fare. The other nice thing about using these is that you can buy these generic $20 uh, axle hangers. Um, basically you get two widths, a wide one and a tall one, and the, like that, you can see there's a difference there. Um, these go on the rear, these go on the front. These actually mount um, kind of on top of the axle like this, whereas these uh, thinner, smaller ones come with these uh, shackle plates, I guess you could call them like that, and this allows the uh, axle to move back as the suspension is compressed. All really standard, really basic stuff. Like I said, I think I have about $260 in everything that you see on the table. Um, the only other thing that I've done kind of off camera here is I bought a two and three quarter Milwaukee hole saw. Um, these uh, hole dozers, I'm not sponsored by Milwaukee or whatever, I paid my own money for this. Um, but these things are awesome, I really like them. And you're gonna need a two and three quarter uh, hole saw to cut a hole in your wheel, assuming you're using uh, like a cast alloy wheel, like I have some wheels. Uh, I think they're off of uh, a, either an early JK or a TJ Rubicon. Um, I'll show you guys the wheels uh, a little later in this episode. But you have to drill out the center to accommodate um, these greasable uh, ends for the hub because the, the stock truck hub doesn't go through the wheel uh, on that particular vehicle, uh, but it does with this axle. So to get everything to fit. So I ordered these in a 5x5, five five, which fits a lot of the, uh, a lot of the Jeep wheels. Um, you can also get the 6x5.5, 
which I think is like a common Toyota uh, bolt pattern. Uh, you can also get them by uh, five by four and a half, which I think is also a common older Jeep pattern. So that's kind of it on the axle. Basically what's gonna happen now is I have a rough drawing. We're making the main box of the trailer 48 inches wide by 60 inches long, plus like a frontal uh, box area. So I bought a bunch of steel today. We're gonna start cutting it, laying it out on the floor and tacking it together. Once it's the base plate of the frame is tacked together, then we can assemble kind of all of our axle components and mount them onto it on the floor, make sure everything lines up, tack everything in place, and then go around and do uh, the final weld on it. So if we take a look here, you guys can see this right here. This is super rough still. Um, I got some new uh, carbide grinders um, and we're gonna smooth this out and finish this off properly. But right now we need to get the axle on, the wheels on this axle so that we can figure out our overall width. So here's our wheels on the axle. Um, it's 68 inches from the outside of the tire to the outside of the tire. So we're probably gonna make our rear bumper maybe 66 inches wide so that our flares have somewhere to go and still cover most of the wheel to keep us compliant. Um, other than that, you can see uh, right now, see how the wheels are a little bit in? That's because you can hear the tires squeal, right? as I rotate the axle. Um, and that is why it's so important to make sure that your spring hangers are on the right side of the axle. Um, otherwise, your suspension geometry is gonna be all, all kinds of shot, uh, even on something that's as basic as this. So, with all that said, since it is the weekend of the Arnold, Brian Shaw, Eddie Hall, uh, coming for you! So I'm sure everybody's got their own methodology for this sort of thing, but I personally like having an assembly line. So what I do is, this is a brand new two by two. You can see it's all oily and greasy. Uh, this station here, I'm gonna use some acetone and some rags. I'm basically just gonna clean it up all the way so that I know that when I cut and I weld, all the oil has been cleaned off and the material is always ready to go. Um, then I bring it over here. This is my Ironton 14 inch dry cut saw. I love this thing. Um, I use this for cutting these stands for like 30 bucks. Make all the difference in the world when you're dealing with heavy steel. Um, and then I have a half angle grinder for cleaning up my cuts. And so basically by the time the piece of metal makes it into the garage, it is um, basically ready to weld or at least fit up. I'm not uh, in here trying to remember which pieces I've cleaned, which pieces I haven't. And so that's what works for me. And I always recommend if you can do something where you're gonna be doing a lot of cutting, a lot of welding, set up an assembly line that way you don't miss steps and you don't uh, end up welding dirty metal. Okay, let me kind of walk you guys through what you're seeing here. It's really welded. Um, we're still uh, just kind of cutting all the pieces. So this right here is a two and a half by two and a half quarter wall tube. It's basically a receiver stock. So any standard trailer hitch can go in it. Um, I'm going to drill it for a pin back here where it's hidden. That way we can uh, basically latch our max coupler to it later. Um, this right here is built out to give us a little extra space uh, up front. These areas right here will be basically doors that access the storage area. You're looking at the trailer uh, as if it were flipped over upside down, right? So this is our water tank. This is a 21 gallon water tank. Uh, it's going to live right here right in front of the axle where the weight is. Um, it'll be skinned from underneath and above, so it'll be pretty much impermeable to whatever we drag it over. Um, these aren't in their final positions, they're not even even, but this is kind of how the leaf springs are. This is the front hanger, the rear has the shackle on it, um, and they will be kind of centered between these two cross pieces over here. And then obviously in the back, we have our heavier wall, it's like 120 wall, 2 by 3 inch uh, rectangular tube. Uh, but at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plasma cut holes here, here, and then back there so that we can run wiring uh, for the trailer lights themselves inside of the frame. Um, and after that, we can start tacking everything together, uh, making sure that everything's kind of uh, square and where I want it to be.
Okay, let me show you guys kind of what's going on back here with our axle mounts. Um, basically, the front mount is a solid mount. You can see that right here. Um, this is the one that has no shackles on it. And then the rear mount, uh, hopefully the camera can catch all of this, is uh, the shackle mount. Um, and you want the shackle basically facing a little bit towards the rear of the trailer, or ideally mine are pretty close to vertical. And the reason for that is, is that the axle moves back when it is flexed. And so you want to have, you know, close to nine degrees of movement so that in theory, uh, basically this, if this leaf spring is flattened, it has space to move backwards. And let me hop up on it um, and show you guys. Now these are pretty stiff springs and I'm only 250, 260 pounds, but as you can see, it moves pretty well. Uh, the reason you don't want it forward is because it will cause the leaf spring to bind. So I have maybe maybe a three to five degree angle facing rearwards uh, on mine. And I'm pretty happy with the way that is. Next step, uh, we gotta get the actual axle onto this uh, and see how it all looks. So uh, what you're looking at here is the axle uh, kind of fully assembled. So we've got the spring hangers uh, tack welded in. We've got the springs mounted and it's about three and seven eighths from the inside brake flange to the inside of the axle mount. So the next step, now that we kind of have that measurement in, next step is to grind down uh, and clean up the axle tubes. And once the axle mounts are in, uh, that locates the uh, leaf springs to the axle. The, ax the leaf springs are already located to the frame. At that point, we can start doing kind of a, um, a final weld on our frame. Well, uh, I got the frame fully welded, but as you can see, we've now hit our first snag. I, when I measured, I measured the outside of this uh, wheel to make sure that the track was right. But what I didn't measure was the inside. These are 10 and a half inch uh, wide tires. So a 33 by 10 and a half, um, about the size. As you can see, we are firmly up against the frame rail here. Um, and that would mean that any sort of suspension flex would push the tire right into um, into the body of the trailer, uh, into the, uh, the fenders. So that's not gonna work. So we can solve this problem two ways. First is I could go and track down a different set of wheels. Um, one that have uh, considerably more, I guess, negative offset. So to push, it, push the wheel and tire out that way. The other option is because this is a standard Jeep bolt pattern, we can just get uh, an inch or two inch wheel spacers, probably two inch wheel spacers. And that'll give us two inches right in here because it's basically just touching. So it'll space the wheel out two inches from the frame, which based on how much the suspension actually flexes, um, which is not a whole lot, uh, should be just fine. I just want to take a moment to show you guys this real quick. This is one of those tricks that um, until you see somebody do it, doesn't really come to mind, but uh, right here, so I'm basically, I'm trying to mount this to the top and it's all trying to walk on me a little bit because welding heat and uh, the cut's not being perfectly straight and whatever, but something like this is perfect. So I'm using the strap to hold this tight against this to close this gap in here. And then I'm using this to space it off so that we're catching just the back lip over here. And then we're using this brick uh, to distribute the weight. All of my cheapo Harbor Freight clamps have lost their little foot. So basically this makes sure this axis is straight. And if you look down here, um, this, this right here is offset the exact same amount over here. If you measure from the corner, you can see it lines up with that corner right back there, just like this one lines up with that corner. So now we can tack this in place and then release all of these clamps. Um, but whenever you have stuff like like this one over here, right? It looks all sorts of misaligned But once we apply a strap and some clamps and push it all in and weld it in It's gonna be nice and square in the end So here's where we're at at the end of day one. I've got about probably seven hours of work uh, in this so far today um, As you can see the axle is hung the frame is built this frame is pretty hefty um, I bought 300 pounds worth of steel to build this and I'm probably going to end up using about 250 pounds of it. A lot of times when you watch people do things on the internet, it's like, oh, he knocked that out in an afternoon. It's not. This fabrication part is definitely going to be the longest part of the, of the build, 
but it's um, obviously important and it needs to be done right. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the way this has turned out so far. Okay, well, <clears throat> as you can see, our frame is nicely together. Um, I ended up adding an extra roof cross brace back there. Um, I ran out of good clean steel, so I had to use some scrap that I had. Um, but that's just an extra uh, load bearing place for uh, the eventual rooftop tent. Now the last thing we're going to tackle in this episode is we're going to build out these door frames. So this area right here and the matching one on the other side will be doors. Um, I haven't decided, they're probably going to open towards the front, so like this. Um, but as you can see, this surface right here is, is perpendicular going that way. This one is here. This surface runs at this kind of uh, angle. And so what we need is we need a smaller frame that will basically box in and make this a flat surface so that our door has something to mount to, it has something to seal to. Uh, so hopefully the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build this door frame and maybe also build the doors. I'm going to build them out of one by, they don't need to be super strong. Uh, and one by uh, a one by square tube is going to be plenty, um, and we have some well done hinges. So hopefully we'll make all of that happen today and close out this episode uh, with having some doors on here. So let's get to it. So you can see we made a door. It's on hinges. They're greasable. They work great. Um, one thing I will say about uh, when you make stuff like this, the way I like to do it is I like to make these doors removable. So I put the bottom piece on here which is the stud. It has this brass bushing on it. So what I do is I line up the door, I shim the door inside the space. Then I tack on this uh, to the body and I tack on this to the top and I take everything off and weld it. And these are of course greasable fittings. They're four inch, they're way overkill for this, but I just bought a, bought a 10 pack of them so that they'd all be identical. Um, I still gotta figure out how we're gonna latch this. Obviously this is in here like this, so it's, uh, there's plenty of material here to build a pretty firm latch. I just have to figure out how I want to do that. And of course, on the other side, we have the same style door that opens outwards like this. Same exact function. Well, that's it for this episode. Uh, we got a lot accomplished. Probably in the next episode, I'm going to finish skinning out uh, the trailer. So it's going to be a little bit more uh, finished. And I have a bunch of stuff that's on order for the electrical system, the water system, and, and so on and so forth. So you guys will see all of that in future episodes. First, a couple little bit of housekeeping. Um, down in the description below, you will find a Google Docs spreadsheet link. Um, that'll show you all the money that I've spent on this project, as well as provide affiliate links uh, through Amazon for a lot of these uh, parts and tools that I've used in these videos. I appreciate you guys using the affiliate links. It does help the channel. All that money gets funneled back into building cool shit and making videos for you guys. Uh, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you like this build series, please subscribe, follow the playlist. Um, we're gonna roll these videos out as, as, as I get through, going through this stuff um, as quickly as I can, but I still wanna make sure I make you know quality videos for you guys. So leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you like, what you don't like about the audio, about the video, about the stuff that I'm building. Uh, any tips and tricks you guys want to throw at me, things you've learned. Um, I'm always open to learning and I love hearing uh, from you guys down in the comments below. That's all I got for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Peace!